30 days of self-denial is over. The Ramadan is finally over. And there seems to be no end in the Yemeni's hospitality. Right now we are invited in a feast in the al Haima tribe village of al Sayyah. Let's go. And after Ramadan, it's eight. People party and eat for five days with bare hands, of course. Tables, long tables full of delicious dishes, all Yemeni style. People are so happy during eight. And I'm too, because I can smoke and drink during the daytime. Look at this! <laughs> it turns out to be a cut farmer's village. A whole valley full of cut. Woohoo! <laughs> Salam alaikum. Salam. As you can see, after the lunch, the whole country basically stops for three hours. Now that's kind of a rhythm I like. Yeah, quit the rat race. Do it Yemeni style. Right. I'm starting to learn. <laughs> Cut also make manpower. Yeah. Make yeah. strong. Strong, yeah. Cut turns a regular Yemeni fellow into a serious ladies' man, or at least that's the common belief. Now on Thursdays, men clean themselves up for the Friday's prayers, and that's also when the guys are most likely to get it on with the missus, if you know what I mean. So naturally, Cut jumps in price on Thursdays. Now that's economics for you. If you think that piece of sticky board on the street was cut, get a lot of this. This is fresh stuff. I can feel my face. I think we'll need some supplies to meet with the demands of the desert. Right? Absolutely. Our traveling batteries are totally charged now, so it's time to move on. Okay. Bye bye. What do on our last oasis before the desert, inshallah. I know it looks unreal, but it is real. <laughs> This is the gate to the empty quarter, Manhattan of the desert, the 2,500-year-old magic kingdom of Shibam. What makes it even more impressive than any other world wonder is that Shibam is still alive and kicking, not just a monument or a site. Another prime example of the unbelievably original nature of Yemen. We just enter the desert, we make the tires more flat to get a better grip. Ready to enter the empty quarter. Before we go any deeper, we have to be escorted by two powerful Bedouin leaders, Mr. Mubarak and Mr. Abdallah from the Sharif tribe. Salama. Bismillah. Stop! <laughs> okay, Tunna, okay. yalla. Oh, 
Okay, the situation is frustrating. After three days of hard traveling, we finally reached the edge of the desert, but we can't continue. There's a new checkpoint, but we don't have the official permit, the Tasrih. Our Bedouin guides from the powerful Sharif tribe, Mr. Abdallah and Mubarak, are trying to fix this problem, but otherwise there's nothing else to do now but to wait, camp here overnight, maybe choose some cut. Inshallah, tomorrow we go. So we don't need tents, we're gonna camp just under the sky, like everybody here in the desert does. You want uh, Hotel Million Star? <laughs> yeah, we have a Million Star Hotel, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Slept like two hours. My eyes, my ears, even my brains are full of sand. <laughs> Arabian explorer. Those are the obstacles you have to stand while roaming the empty quarter. Yeah, but we have tents, right? We have also tents. Yeah, we have tents. Could have been staying there as well. But this was an experience, right? Tomorrow we will sleep in tents. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> Things are sorting out, we're probably going further into the desert. Although, we might have to sneak around the checkpoint. From here, we'll have to take camels. The Yemeni guys will take the jeeps through the checkpoints and we'll meet at the Bedouin camp in the middle of the Rubal Kali desert. See you later. Bye. See you there then. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay. We're riding straight into the largest sand desert of the world, Rubal Kali, that's part of the empty quarter, is 1,000 kilometers long and 5,000 wide. Even the nomads avoid the enormous desert heat, climbing up to 55 degrees Celsius on a bad day. This is true Bedouin country, the wild frontier of Yemen. In this jurisdiction, there's no law about the tribal tradition and of course the Sharia, the rules of Islam. You definitely need some contacts to travel here. <laughs> Anything which has more than two legs, I wish to meet only at my plate. Look at those two brothers. <laughs> Ei vittu, että sattuu saatana. Ah, it's, it's mutual. I hate them, they hate me. Some Bedouins have carried out most of the kidnappings of foreigners as a way to protest against the government. Failed promises of improving electricity, roads or economic resources are the main reasons. However, mostly the kidnapped have been treated very well and soon released. These guys hardly seem international terrorists like lots of people in the West would like to believe. Hopefully things will stay this way when we finally reach the Bedouin camp. So Ibrahim, is it still long for? After one hour we will reach the camp. Okay, one hour. Good come on. Hey! Hey! Good again. So we made it around the checkpoint. It's time to abandon the humps. I'm very happy about it. My ass is on fire and I'm a little bit angry as well. <laughs> a little bit. Shukran! Afwan! Ma'asalama! Shukran! Saruf. This is Saruf. 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 Okay. And uh, one, two. Hey, this one. Yeah. Two, 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 two. This, 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 this. this one. Yeah, yeah. Ali Rusi. Ali Rusi. Kalashnikov. 
Here in tribal Yemen, you can't travel without spotting some boys with toys. By estimate, in the country of 23 million people, there's more than 60 million personal weapons, pistols, AK-47s, hand grenades, and even bazookas. Traditionally, guns are means of defense and status symbols as well. Saro. A traveler doesn't have to worry too much about this. The local philosophy on guns is quite rational and weapons are not easily raised. The government is working on the gun control and advancing little by little. Nowadays you have to check your blasters when entering the cities. But not here. This is Bedouin country.